Hey guys, welcome back. It's Matt here and today we're going to be taking a look at the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. This is a fairly new smartphone by Samsung and obviously it's one of their main flagships. Everyone's always really hyped about the Note series and it tends to be the highest spec series that's available from Samsung. And throughout the past, I've always had a Note series phone pretty much from the Note 2 onwards up to the Note 5. Then I went over to the S series, so I started off with the S7 Edge, then the S8 Plus, then the S9 Plus, S10 Plus, and now I'm on currently the S20 Ultra. So that is pretty much the highest end S phone, and this is the latest Note phone. So we're gonna do a little comparison. So I first wanna mention the price because that really does change my opinion about the features and the quality of the phone because the price is so high. It's $1,300 or 1,179 pounds. In terms of the build quality, it's very, very good on this phone. It's very weighted, it feels premium. You've got glass on the front and the back and you have that metal bezel that goes around the outside. Some color options have a matte finish back. The black one that I have simply doesn't. It's very reflective and fingerprinty. I'm not the biggest fan of it. It would have been nicer if it was a matte finish just because I've had a real pain with the S20 Ultra just being such a fingerprint magnet and that really does carry on to the Note. But to me, the camera array on the Note looks a little bit better than the S20 Ultra, just looks a little bit more equal and more thought out and it has that sort of look around the lens that's like chamfered. I personally just dig that. I think it's a little bit better than the S20 Ultra. But apart from that look, when I was testing the cameras, they didn't really seem much different from each other. They seemed very similar. And apart from the Note not having the 100 times zoom, it's now only got 50 times, I really didn't see much difference. It does have a little bit better uh, laser focus for up close objects. The S20 Ultra did have many issues with the focusing, but Samsung's done a lot of updates to try and control that, make that just a little bit better. But the Note series could do with some updates and some optimization. Laser autofocus definitely doesn't work too well if you're in big areas, but it does work on focusing objects up close. But we'll dive into the camera a little bit later. I do just wanna mention that one of my favorite things about this phone, and I know many people might not care about it, but it's the vibration motors. The actual haptics when you're typing or you get notifications are so important to me. I pretty much keep my phone on vibrate, so I don't really have it playing out things loud. I don't really like that. I prefer it to just vibrate. And the haptics in this phone are great. They're just like the S20 Ultra. They are very, very strong and you can get sort of a pulse out of it rather than an actual vibration. It's more of like someone's tapping the phone. So I really do like that. They might have copied it a bit from the iPhone, but I really appreciate that in the phone. It really just makes the experience more premium. And having just little features that are just that little bit extra quality that Samsung didn't skimp on basically just moves the phone up towards the price point that little bit more in my opinion. I still don't really think it's worth $1,300. To me, it's probably worth a thousand, but let me know what you think down below. How much would you pay for this phone? Taking a look at the bottom, no headphone jack there. So Samsung's keeping up with the trend of no headphone jack, just like every other manufacturer out there. So pretty much the headphone jack is still dead. You also have your speaker, which is stereo. There's an earpiece speaker as well as the one on the bottom. It can be easily covered up. It's not the best in the world, but it does have Dolby sound. They do like their optimization and things to make it sound better, but it's still not the best out there. And then you have your S Pen on the left. You simply push in and it clicks out and you can pull it out and use it just as all the other S Pens in the past. This one has all those features like the wireless gestures. You can wave your pen like a magic wand in the air. And it also has the usual sort of cutting tools and quick selection tools. And you can obviously write on the phone. You have all the pressure sensitivity and you also have better response time on the S Pen. It's nine milliseconds and that can be thanks to the 120 Hertz display. But talking about the display, it's a 6.9 inch Super AMOLED display. Definitely doesn't disappoint. It's got exceptional brightness. It's 5% brighter than the S20 Ultra and you can really see it outdoors. You have no issue with it being reflective or anything. This is an excellent display. And in my opinion, probably one of the best ones out there. The resolution can max out at 3840 by 1440, that's WQHD, but personally I'd rather have it slightly lower at full HD with the 120 hertz because at max resolution, there's only 60 hertz. Something really handy is that there's adaptive refresh rate, so there is updates coming out to the S20 Ultra to improve this, but this has the new adaptive technology, which basically means when you're watching a 30 FPS video, it's not gonna be refreshing at 120 like you have selected. But when you're scrolling and swiping, then it's definitely gonna be full out 
120 hertz. And I think this is really good because the battery for one is smaller in this Note series. It's only 4,500 milliamp hours, unlike the S20 Ultra, which is 5,000 milliamp hours. So you are dropping a bit. So it is nice to have that adaptive refresh rate just to improve battery life. But personally, I still think the battery could be a bit better. You do have the super fast charging. So that's really nice out of the box, 25 watt charging but I still think it just kind of lacks. It's only getting around four or five hours of screen on time. And that's really if I'm trying to save power and I'm not trying to like kill my phone in a few hours, I could definitely kill it really easily. Unfortunately, the Note series is no longer the king of the battery game and it does lack a lot in that department. I personally would rather have the phone a little bit thicker with more battery in and the camera does bulge out quite a lot. So that might help also by having a thicker device. Now there's some more disappointment because I'm in Europe and so my phone is actually the Exynos version so it's less powerful, Geekbench does score it lower and I found it a little bit disappointing and especially since the price is around the same here than in North America so you're getting a less powerful phone which is just a bit disappointing Samsung and I know it's due to like manufacturing and they can't make that many chips but come on Samsung really? It's a bit disappointing. So you do have the Exynos 990, you don't have the Snapdragon 865 Plus. Both units have 12 gigabytes of RAM, which is nice. There's extra RAM for when you're multitasking and you're using heavy applications. Um, RAM management is great on this phone, but it's not really surprising considering there's 12 gigabytes, which is more than some laptops. In terms of storage, there's 256 and 512 gigabytes. I personally would stick with 128. Samsung should have kept that lower version to me because it has expandable storage and I don't really use that much. So it would really be nice to get a cheaper phone with less storage and I can just buy a micro SD card and put it in. So to me, I wish there was a lower storage model, but there isn't. So that's how it is. But you still have all those crazy Samsung features like the air gestures with the pen. You still have reverse wireless charging, fast wireless charging. You also have IP68 water resistance. You have all the camera features. You have single take, which takes multiple pictures and videos from the different cameras and puts them all together. You have 8K video. You have front facing camera 4K video, the AR mode. You have Bixby still, but I'm personally not a big fan. You have the edge swipe, edge lighting, there's just really so many features jammed into this phone. You also have the wireless deck, so you can go ahead and use your Samsung Smart TV as basically a computer and you can use your phone as a mouse. It's really, really cool. There's just so many things jammed into here and you really just need to dive in and have a look online for yourself because I couldn't possibly go over them all in this video. But the last thing we're gonna be mentioning is the cameras because that's the big hype about Samsung phones this year and the huge camera bumps on the back, which mean you can't even put your phone down on the table without it rocking. Uh, we're gonna be going ahead and taking a look at the different camera modules. So the main camera is 108 megapixels. You have laser autofocus as well as optical image stabilization. This is a great sensor. I've taken a few photos with it and I can say that it's definitely up to par and probably better than the S20 Ultra. That might just be a little bit of software which is due to come out on the S20 Ultra soon, but I don't think the focus will get as good as on the Note series. Like I mentioned earlier, laser focus does have issues due to like large spaces because the laser has to bounce back. So if you're in an open area, it's still gonna software a focus. And then you have the zoom lens, which is only 50 times hybrid zoom, five times optical zoom. So it's not that 100 times space zoom. Personally, I don't really care that much. Space zoom, I never really went all the way to 100 because it just gets unusable and blurry. It's really a little bit of a gimmick and I'm glad they stuck it down to 50. And then you have your wide angle lens, which I actually use a lot. It's 12 megapixels and it does allow you to record 4K at 30 FPS. I really like the wide angle. It gives you that GoPro look. And if you can't really get any space to take a picture, you can go ahead and use this. So if you're up close or in a tight space, it's really, really good. And I always say that I use this more than the zoom because if you can zoom into something, you can move closer, but if you don't have space, then you can't move away. So the ultra wide is definitely more important to me, but overall the pictures and videos from this phone are exceptionally good. And I still think that the iPhone does have better photos overall in all conditions, but I would say the Note has some really nice photos if you like that look, if you like the over contrasted, really sort of vibrant look of the photos and videos, then you might wanna go ahead and pick up the Note for the camera. But anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. That's my thoughts on the Note 20 Ultra. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely comment down below and subscribe. See you guys later. Peace out.
castle in the sky We can run